third generation Porsche KN is an evolution for the German mark. But while Stuttgart's family hauler has retained its familiar large SUV bearing, there's plenty new going on under the skin. Impressive performance car like dynamics. Sub 4 seconds 0 to 100 km per hour claim for the turbo. Newly uncluttered cabin ergonomics. Loaded with connectivity and tech. New fangled tungsten carbide coated brakes work a treat. Visually very similar to old model still feels its 2 ton plus heft. If you just taken your first peek at the third generation Porsche KN and thought really? Is that it, you're certainly not alone. Blind Freddy could see that Stuttgart's plus sized family hauler is, on appearance, more than a little familiar. There are, however, three quarters of a million reasons why, stylistically, this new apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's how many KNs have been sold to date, a quarter mil in the first generation, double that at a half mil for Gen 2. Good business, then, and Porsche is, understandably, not too keen to rock a boat that's charting a successful course. But take three, or, more accurately, take five including midlife facelifts, of the KN has much variation in detail even if it's tough to pick and the overall brief remains conservative evolution. The roof is 9mm lower, it's 63mm longer and 23mm wider, though it does sit on why engineers describe as a sweet spot wheelbase of 2895mm, identical to Gen 2. The net effect is a subtly more squat look in overall proportions, edgier lines and a touch more muscularity in its stance, which is more evident in the flesh than in photos. The effect is enhanced in no small measure by 25mm larger rolling diameter wheel slash tire combinations and, new for KN, fatter rubber and rims in the rear than up in front, a la BMW X5 and X6. From the Macon-esque headlights and grille treatment, through to the more pronounced shoulders over the rear wheel arches, the new styling appears as if the old KN had popped off on a hiatus of healthy dieting and gym binging. And while it's mostly effective by way of subtlety, at the rear end where the most conspicuous alterations have taken place, what with its new and oh so 911 like light strip eye candy linking the sharply defined tail lights. It might unty appear larger but it is, nigh on 5 meters in length, nearly 2 meters in width, and this growth pays dividends in an extra 100 liters of luggage space, now 770 liters rear seats in play, in base and S forms, while the third variant, the mighty turbo, has a slightly more compact 745L area. It's also claimed that the lower roofline height has not impacted cabin space headroom by as much as a millimeter. Despite the growth spurt, KN is more lightweight across its range than predecessors. A lot of this has to do with the aluminium-rich construction, which includes the entire outer skin and the floor pan. It's not a huge weight saving, at 1,985 kg, base, through to 2,175 kg, turbo, they're still hefty buggers. But there is a sort of formula now bedded into KN Evolution that's long been applied to Porsche's Golden Child 911, incremental gains in weight saving, powertrain delivery and the technologies behind dynamism, plus a lot of toil getting the whole shebang to work in tuneful harmony so that there's noticeable driver-centric improvements in the seat of the pants experience. Leaner form, meaner motivation. The base KN gets a single turbocharged 3.0 LV6 familiar to the Volkswagen Audi group, if with a proprietary Porsche tune. Its 250kW-450 Nm credentials boost outputs by around 25 kW and 50 Nm, applied through the range-wide adoption of 8-speed automatics and all-wheel drive. The gain in performance, though, is eye-opening, as the new base KN is claimed to have wiped a staggering 1.7 SEC of the old version's 0 to 100 km per hour sprint, now 5.9 SEC. Its top speed is 245 km per hour. The S gets a 2.9-liter Viterbo V6 producing a significantly lustier 324kW-550nm, if a modest 14kW gain all told over the Gen 2 version. 
and yet Porsche has managed to swipe half a second of its 0 to 100 km per hour sprint time, now 4.9 SEC, with a VMAX capped at 265 km per hour. But we choose the range topping turbo as our introduction to Gen 3 KN at its international launch, across the seemingly endless twisty mountains roads on the island of Crete in Greece. With a heady 404kW-770 Nm from its 4.0-liter Viterbo V8, output gains over the old version are just 22kW-20 Nm. The net benefit across the 0 to 100 km per hour sprint is a half-second gain, which is a whopping improvement when your benchmark is in the low 4s. The new version's form guide claims a slightly ludicrous 3.9 SEC YEP, a sub 4 second KN. While Crete's not exactly prime real estate for testing acceleration claims, its twisty mountainous nature is ideal for appraising dynamic metal. With time short, we decide to opt out of sampling the price leading base version until Australian pricing and spec is revealed closer to the three variant strong ranges local release in the first half of next year when the all-important value quotient will become significantly clearer. The turbo showcases a host of new goodies on offer, new multi-link suspension front and rear, new aluminium subframes, new three-chamber air suspension, 48-volt electromechanical anti-roll stabilization, and active rear axle steering all weave techy magic under the skin. More conspicuous is a production first for the mark called the Porsche Surface Coated Brake System, huge 415 mm front slash 365 mm rear gray iron discs treated to tungsten carbide coating, a sort of missing link between standard iron and carbon ceramic braking types, clamped by 10 and 4 piston calipers finished in white. The turbo also gets an exclusive active rear roof spoiler that automatically deploys above 160 km per hour to create varying degrees of downforce and, in its fifth and steepest position, an air brake effect said to wipe 2 meters off the braking distance should you attempt a full ABS stop from 250 km per hour. Climb into the turbo and you immediately sense that Porsche's claim of KN being the sports car of its segment is about long drawn. The cabin design and ambience is one of overt, if stylistically restrained, luxuriousness. It's lean on flash, rich in tactile quality. That said, the seating, with integrated headrests up front and strong plus two leanings in back, tips its hat to 911. There's no seven seat option. Gone is the button fetish, replaced by a cleaner and simpler glassy touch surface design, with nice waxy feel leather, chunky metal, and slick new piano black column switch gear the highlights that ties in with the shiny center console finish and screens nicely. The layout and controls are nicer to touch, simpler and more intuitive to use. He software inside those screens, dual 7.0-inch TFT driver's screen flanking the analog taco, the flush 12.3-inch infotainment touch screen, isn't as cluttered and overwrought as some German rivals. This relatively new approach championed by the current Gen Panamera is a finer, more mature step forward in Porsche approach to interiors. The deeply sculpted front buckets, low slung seating positioning and tactile wheel, hint at performance purpose, as does the faint muted thrum of the Bitterbo V8 on startup. On the move, in default normal drive mode, its manner is tempered and measured, its operation smooth and quiet, and its air suspension cosseting if feeling somewhat detached in linking the driver to the road surface. So far, so luxury SUV-like. That said, the newfound connection of nicely weighted steering is a welcome improvement. But as our test route leaves Greece's gentile and picturesque coastal main thoroughfares for narrow, pockmarked, partly rain-trodden mountain back roads, the turbo's monster within surfaces with little more a twist of wheel-mounted mode selector, to sport, and a flex of the right foot. The Bitterbo V8 grabs 770 nanometers below 2000 rpm and how it thrusts what's surely over 2.3 tons of SUV, occupants, and luggage, is quite breathtaking, and with a sudden, turbulent exhaust howl appearing from nowhere. Quick. You bet. But it's the sheer mass of the thing that makes me doubt that glorious 3.9 SEC claim. It doesn't feel quite that quick. And I also wonder how 
even with all that dynamic clever dickery at play, so much metal, glass and rubber will become sports like when tipped hard into a corner. Those glossy looking, tungsten carbide brakes work an absolute charm, with excellent pedal feed and tremendous stopping power. Firing hot into a tight, closing radius corner, their power and precision is a godsend. Sport really does inject muscle and purpose into the turbo's dynamic complexion, not merely in a flatter stance and a heightened sense of outright cornering grip, but also with steering precision and chassis feedback. That said, it does demand restraint and measured inputs from the driver. The recovery of front end grip from the odd understeer moment is progressive and predictable. It hangs on stridently mid-corner, and powers beyond with sure-footed progress, but it's not overly playful and, from either behind the wheel or the passenger seat, you're keen aware of its large SUV limitations. Then you activate sport and and the turbo seems to start bending the laws of physics. Sure, it's sharper, edgier, and more responsive, and the 8-speed automatics calibration, be it self-shifting or manualist, finally joins the party with swift speed and precision. But it's the newfound and heightened cooperation that allows the driver to easily dance and play with the chassis through the middle of the corner, and it fires enough torque rearward under hard acceleration that linking corners becomes a laugh aloud game of continual and generous swings of opposite steering lock. With some right foot restraint, the turbo can be manhandled, but its eagerness to pile on pace demands respect from the driver. In a more open environment the turbo might seem more at home, but it demonstrates a degree of sheer performance trickery to fully harness across the confines of the narrow Greek island roads. The message, though, is loud and clear, older KNs weren't quite this much fun and this ferocious. The staggered wheel width seems something of a game changer for the breed. It's as if the shift to wider rear tires has altered the KN's inherent balance and allowed engineers to tune in more oversteering fun into the all-round package. It's a trick BMW has long adopted with its X5M slash X6M stock, producing genuine car-like dynamic adjustability, and it seems Porsche has finally followed suit with its competitor. Sports like Not so much in a Puritan sense. It's certainly not lithe. But as a genuinely heady high performer in a plus sized package, the turbo is both compelling and capable in big doses. As some measure of proof, during our drive, the onboard G meter recorded spikes of over one golf acceleration in every direction, which is pretty remarkable for over two tons of family friendliness in a tight and twisty public forum. Stymied ultimate potential? Perhaps so. Next up, the Bitterbo 6 powered S. And after a half day of solid high flying through the Greek mountainside, we're inclined to advise the mid-range variant is perhaps the sweet spot of the KN range. Or, at least, a seemingly fitter steed for the driving at hand. What's the go with the engine? Why a 2.9-liter V6 in the S rather than the base car's larger 3.0-liter capacity? Engineers explain it's essentially the same core engine with an identical bore size, but in the higher power 2.9 they've shortened the 3.0 liter s inherently long stroke by 3 mm, from 89 mm to 86 mm. Why? For improved durability when you increase boost and engine RPM, 6800 RPM versus 6500 RPM, to achieve peak power, an added 74 kW. And as the initial tune launching a new generation of KN, there's plenty of inbuilt engineering headroom to increase outputs throughout its life cycle. The high power Bitterbo V6 pulls hard, sounds great, is married to the ZF sourced 8 speed automatic, indifferent unit to the higher torque rated turbo unit, sweetly and, around Crete at least, offers enough output so you can feasible use having a hot punt. Being more lightweight than the turbo, it's a little more chuckable though the corners, it remains obedient and cooperative to driver input, and its deft torque shuffling smarts allows the same power down over steer trick as the turbo. If anything, the mid-rangers lifts in purpose and performance from normal to sport and onto sport plus, are more evenly balanced for road use. Unlike the turbo, you can dig in harder and use more of its ultimate capabilities on road. Spend a couple of hours in the S and you begin to wonder why, with the rationale viewpoint, 
you'd even need to fork out a handsome premium for the turbo version. The jury is out for off-road capabilities. Porsche's test route did hit the beaten path for a few kilometers, a fairly manicured half-broken slash half-sealed pass up the side of a hill. Certifiably European off-road, then, rather than your typically harder core Aussie stuff. Yes, there's a gamut of dedicated off-road drive modes, gravel, rock, mud, that alter the ride height and recalibrate the driving characteristics to suit, but as someone who once bogged a KN Turbo years back in nothing more than ankle-deep slurry, I'm keenly aware progress is largely at the mercy of tire type. Not only are grooves in our car's 21-inch low-profile rubber shallow and certifiably on-road, the sheer size of KN's brakes severely limits choice of alternative mud tire and rim combinations. Off-road ability, though, is something of a side act. Talk to those who created it and the third-generation KN is anchored off two aims, to increase the sportiness and performance because it's a Porsche, and to increase the levels of smart assistance and connectivity, one senses, because rivals have lifted expectations and, in turn, customers demand more in these areas than Porsche has traditionally delivered. Porsche made a fair song and dance about assistance systems and the KN's newfound levels of connectivity in Greece. But with time short and, frankly, barely a straight piece of road to be seen across our 48 hours with the range, there was nary a chance to divert our gaze from the black stuff outside to have a good dig around its technical creature comfort and connectivity trick bag. In Europe, LED matrix headlights, night vision and lane change assists, park assist, surround view cameras and adaptive cruise control are optional, so it remains to be seen how many of these features are fitted standard and to which variants. There are also a host of connectivity technologies that come under the Porsche Connect banner, though many of these app-based features demand localized development to ever see Aussie release. Some of the features will available at the Australian launch, and all could eventually be rolled out provided there's infrastructure to support it, says Porsche Australia. Almost strangely, the broader qualities around KN's practicalities as a family hauler remain largely unchanged. Apart from the notable glass-screened controls for second-row climate control, it takes some effort to spot where this generation has instigated change. Not that Porsche's large SUV breed lacked by any glaring degree to begin with. The new KN impresses most in depth. It rewards once you dig into the experience and surely the goodness within is easily overlooked if your measure of judgment is based on changes to exterior styling. It's still no sportska, and it's still ultimately encumbered by its heft. But the capabilities Porsche has injected in a format hamstrung by circa two tons of weight is quite remarkable. Having said that, for ultimate driving enjoyment, you're better off shopping within the Macon range. While the S and Turbo, in different ways, lift the averages for greatness amongst large, luxo dipped, performance SUVs, new KN remains evolution rather than revolution. But like its stablemate sports skis, the progress gained is an ever-increasingly high watermark.